Hey guys, I'm going to do a really quick video on how you estimate the age of the universe. So the age of the universe is um, accepted to be about 13.7 billions, billions of years. And the age of the universe and the size of the universe depend on HO, which is the Hubble constant. Okay. And if you don't know about the Hubble constant, please go on my previous video when I talk about the Hubble constant and uh, the Big Bang. Okay. Now, for you to figure out how to calculate the age of the universe and to get the formula, all that you need to do is to look at the Hubble's formula, okay? And check what are the SIs of the universal units for the Hubble constant. The formula says that the velocity that the galaxies are receding from us in kilometers per second equals to that constant times the distance. And the distance comes in megaparsecs, where a megaparsec is 3.09 times 10 to the power of 22 meters. So if you look at it, the Hubble's constant, although we know that the number is between 50 and 100, uh, at the moment, uh, I think is 71, 72, 75, these are the most likely values, but we are still looking for data and more and more data is going to give us a better um, idea of what the Hubble constant is. The Hubble constant is then going to have the units of kilometers per second divided by megaparsec. So it's kilometers, second minus one, megaparsec minus one, okay? So that means that the units for the Hubble constant is one over second. And the way that you get the units for the Hubble constant is to make the velocity in meters per second and the distance in meters. This makes that the meters from the velocity cancel out with the distance in meters or the units in meters for the distance. And you get one over S as the units for the Hubble constant. This means that if I simply do one divided by one over s, so one over h o, that is going to be my formula to calculate or actually estimate the age of the universe, okay? And now the age of the universe can only be estimated because we still don't know the exact value of the Hubble constant, okay? So let's do this. Let's calculate the age of the universe. Um, now, just before I start, so I was saying, let's do it. And then I'm like, oh, so just before we start. So if the, temp the, t uh, the time, sorry, is 13.7 billions of years, which is more or less what we say at the moment, it means that we can see the universe as far as 13.7 billions of years in all directions, as if we were in the center of a sphere and anywhere we would look, we could see up to 13.7 billions of years, okay? Now, the size of the observable universe depends on the age, and that depends on the Hubble's constant. So the size depends on the age because it depends on how long the universe is expanding. So the more it expands, the bigger it becomes. So that's why the size depends on the age. And the age de depends on the Hubble constant, HO, because as you can see, the formula is that the time in seconds equals one over HO, okay? So that's why the Hubble's constant is so important. Now, age of the universe, let's do it. So I'll do one over HO. I'm going to do HO to be 75, although I think my result shows as if I would have used the number 71. But anyway, you get a number more or less like that, okay? And then I'm going to make those kilometers per second into meters per second. So that's why I'm going here to multiply by 10 to the power of 3, because there are 10 to the power of 3, so 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So 75 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second divided by the distance, right? In mega, uh, the megaparsecs need to go in meters, so divided by 3.1 times 10 to the power of 22 meters. If I do these calculations and I cancel out these two m's, so the one from kilometers per second and the one from the megaparsec to become meters, I get 1 over 2.43 times 10 to the power of minus 18, second minus 1. So if I do this calculation, I get 4.1 times 10 to the power of 17 uh, seconds. I now want to convert the seconds into years. So what I do is 4.1 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds divided by the number of days we have in a year. So 365. That multiplies the number of uh, hours we have in a day. 
so times 24 and because I have 60 minutes in each hour I still need to multiply it further by 60 and because I have 60 seconds in a minute I'll multiply it further by 60 so I get 4.1 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds divided by a hundred sorry 365 multiplying 24 that multiplies 60 that multiplies 60 okay all of that in the lower part of the division so this will give me a value of 13.6 times 10 to the power of 9 years which means 13.6 billions of years okay Again, I think the 13.6 gets if I actually use 71 or 72 instead of 75 as the Hubble constant. But again, this is how you do it. So you get the right, you know, answer. All right. Now, let's just uh, see why these uh, sentences are either true or false. My PowerPoint is all done by me, apart from this slide. This one is from BoardWorks, as it shows on the top, okay? So, before the Hubble's observations in 1925, the universe was thought to be consisting only of the Milky Way galaxy. That is true, okay? So, his observations made us see that there are more galaxies in the universe, and that they are all moving from us apart from Andromeda. So that's why number two is false. All galaxies are moving away from us. That's true for all galaxies apart from Andromeda, which is the galaxy that, are clo that is closer to us, the Milky Way galaxy, and that one is actually moving towards us because it's in a route for colli colliding with us. It's going to collide with us. So that one shows blue shift instead okay the further away a galaxy is from our own the faster it is receding that is true Hubble's uh, law says that the velocity equals the Hubble constant times the distance so if I have a higher distance multiplied by a constant I get a higher velocity next one is true as well Hubble's law allows us to estimate the age of the universe as long as we assume the Hubble constant to be constant and that's true because there was an inflation period right after the Big Bang it may be that actually the Hubble constant is not always a constant and sometimes in some air, uh, some ages it has a certain number and in other ages it has a different one because again we had an inflation period where the universe was expanding faster than the speed of light so it could be that the Hubble constant is actually not a constant at all but using the physics that we have at the moment if I assume it to be a constant then I can estimate the age and the size of the universe and the last sentence is false because it says Hubble's law and modern observations suggest that the universe is roughly 14 trillion years old if it would say 14 billion years old you could make it true because in astrophysics a couple of million is not going to make a difference but it says 14 trillion so that one is false okay so in summary this part of cosmology the red shift is when objects are moving away so these are, sh are showing us along with go to my previous video on the big bang theory and uh, that we have red shift cosmic microwave background radiation and then we have uh, the amount of helium in the universe that it all matches as evidence for the big bang this redshift is evidence that the universe is expanding okay the rate of expansion does depend on a hubble constant the galaxies are actually not m physically moving away what is happening is that the space in between the galaxies is moving and expanding and this makes that the galaxies in that particular part of the space are going to go closer uh, further away from each other this is known as a cosmological redshift which is different to the red or blue shift that you have when uh, an ambulance for example passes through you at a relative velocity to you okay now if you want to see this part of the galaxies are not moving away and the space is what is moving or expanding pick some balloons draw on the balloon a grid and then at the points where the lines meet on the grid uh, label them a b c d and these are going to be your galaxies you get air into the balloon so you expand the balloon and you're going to see that the plastic that makes up or the rubber that makes up that balloon expands so the galaxy A, B, C or D that you put on the grid, they are still on the grid, they are still in the same place, it's just that the balloon 
got bigger because the space expanded and therefore as a consequence a b c and d although they are in the same position within the grid they are further away from each other because the space in between them expanded okay anywhere in the universe things are moving away from each other apart from the andromeda galaxy remember that is in route for collision to ours and this suggests that the universe started with an explosion from a very hot point and very dense point as well called the big bang called the big bang the universe starting okay if you want to know more about the big bang go on the playlist on cosmology uh, astrophysics cosmology and i have there what it is how we came to be as a theory and the evidence redshift cosmic microwave background radiation and the amount of helium in, in the universe okay so that is it for me for now uh up to my next video be happy and healthy bye